do your trains just shoot off like this? Stick around and I'll show you how to sort it. Good morning everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, even though this is N-Gage, what we're going to talk about this morning applies not only to N-Gage, double O, possibly even to O-Gage too, if it uses DCC and your chips are NMRA compliant, chances are this will work for you. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about different CV values, but keep it simple. I'm not going to go into the complex stuff. This is the basics purely to get your trains running realistically. That's it. Maybe to sort out one or two issues. If you've got a train that's got two carriages and you've got the same light showing at both directions, I'll show you how to sort that out as well. Okay, I'm gonna take you down to the test track and show you how to do it down there. Okay, welcome back downstairs. Now I've got two, well, say three controllers. Um, there is this, um, and I am going to do a special feature at the end of the video for this, so stay tuned and I'll show you what you can do with this. It's not much, but you can do more than you perhaps think. Now, for, my, for the most, I'm going to be using the Z21. I do have the white version for my double O gauge and the black version for the N gauge. There isn't a massive amount of difference, but um, the black one does have a little bit more capacity. Now, if you notice, and you might be able to see that connector, because I've got multiple connectors, and I want to be able to test the different uh, controllers on this layout, so I can have it DC if I want to, I can have it DCC, I always fit these types of connectors. So it's literally just a quick push fit, and that's a new controller connected. I don't have to fiddle about with trying to put wires into the back of the controller. Right, hopefully, if I put that there, hopefully you'll be able to see I've got the Z21 on the iPad in front of me. And we've got class 150 sitting there. Now, in the description, I said I was going to go through CVs 1 to 6, 8, and a, little, a tiny little bit on 29. Now, CV1 is the address. It's as simple as that. So I perhaps don't need to go into doing that too much because most controllers do have a setting for um, addressing your trains. So CV1 is the address. CV2 is something you perhaps might want to consider. So if I go into CV programming here and I am going to go into program track because then that cuts out the address section and I only have to then set uh, the actual CV I want. Now, if I go CV2, so I'm just going to press the plus and that sets it to CV2, I'm going to go read. You heard the train clicking and it's come back 20. Now that is an enormous number. That means the train is going to shoot off at a rate of knots. Now I always try and set mine down to 1 or two, something like that. And set CV, you'll see the train moving. There you go, the lights just blinkered. Now, if I now go back in, so in here, you'll find, let's put that, get rid of that one. You'll find that this will then enable you to do slow running. Look at that. Now, I don't know whether you can see that, but that is moving. If I put the paintbrush there, you can see it will overtake the paintbrush. Yeah? Now, that is an impressive slow speed. John, I want my trains to move off more realistically and slowly. Well, it depends on the type of train you've got to how quickly it will move off. If you've got a modern train, like a Class 800, perhaps not quite so much with this, or maybe um, a modern DMU, then they're going to move off much more quickly than a steamer would. 
So the value you put in, you'll have to experiment with. So I'm going to go back. Right, let's go CB3. Let's set it to 30 this time. And 30. And set. And go back into running again. And up there. Now, you can see that is moving off an awful lot more realistically now. And the train, even though it's going out of shot now, will start to build up speed all by itself. Okay, and stop that, hit the stop button. So, but that might be a little bit too fast for you. Say, for example, you've got a steam locomotive. I'd be thinking about putting that to something like 60 or 70. It depends on how fast you want it to pull off. It's entirely up to you. So again, I'm going to go back into this. And I'm now going to actually put in three just there and CV. Let's go 60 on this occasion. So CV3, CV3, and I'm going to set it to 60 and set value. There you go, the train just clicked. Now watch what happens now. So a much, much, much slower start. So you can imagine now for a steam locomotive, that would probably be about perfect. Or if you've got a heavy freight train, something like that. So the quicker the train, the more modern the train, maybe a class 800, I'd probably set that to something like 2025, whereas a fast, a much slower train, in fact, you can see it's still building up speed even now, and that's still nowhere close to full speed yet. But like I said, a slower train is gonna take longer to build up the speed. I did hear somebody say once that it's probably, if you set it to something like 25, it'll take 25 seconds to get up to that speed. So in take 60 seconds to get up to full speed. I don't know quite how true that is, but it certainly gives you a good idea. So I'm gonna bring that to a stop now. That. Now CV4 is deacceleration or deceleration. In other words, the slowing down. Now it's exactly the same. The the lower the number, the faster it will stop. The higher the number, the longer it will take to stop. But let's go in now and put in, if I change programming track and go into CV4, at the top there. Now I'm gonna set that to 60. I want to show you the difference. Now, Understand, when you want to bring a train to a stop, there's usually a reason for why you want to stop it. Now, it could be that your trains are on a big loop and they're just running round and round and round and where it stops is you're happy with that. But if you've got a station or you need to stop your train in a particular point, the higher the number, the much more difficult it is to stop the train. I'll show you. So I'm going to get it up to full speed. Now remember, it's still set to 60. A loop. So you can see we're getting close to full speed. Now I'm going to hit the stop button now. Now I'd like my train to stop here. But oh, we're still going. We're still going, still going. Over there. And it's only just coming to a stop now. If you're happy with that, that's absolutely fine. But I'm certainly not happy with that because I wanted the train to stop here. So I normally set my, my deacceleration on all trains Actually, if I go into programming, it helped, wouldn't it? I set all my programming, deacceleration, 
to 15. That then gives me some element of realistic slowing, but then it gives me that point where I can just hit stop and the train will just stop where I want it to. Right, I'm gonna set that going there now. So you can see for me and a class 150, that's running absolutely fine. Trains over there, I'm gonna hit stop. Now I'll bring the train to a stop there. And that's pretty much perfect. So you can see my finger representing the platform. I wouldn't want it any better than that. All right, so the more you have it, the longer it'll take to either speed up or slow down. Right, CB5. Now, to understand this, you've got to realize that CB2, 5 and 6 all work together. CV2 starts off with how fast or how slow the train will go at the beginning of its journey. Six is the mid speed and five is the top speed. Now we'll set, we'll go back into programming. Now if we go into, and I'll set that to five and I'm gonna put in two five five because that's the maximum that you can put in. Now, the, the, the amount you put in there would really depend on the train you've got. If you've got, again, a steamer, would it really be going at the same speed as a class 800? No, it wouldn't. Um, in the same way, um, if you've got a 56 pulling a heavy um, coal train, it's not going to be going that fast. So you don't need that number set really high. But I'll show you. And the train's obviously over there. So let's go back into running. And I'll put that to the top up there. Now bear in mind, this is still set to CV30 um, for the acceleration. Or C the CV3 is set to 30, I should say. Now this is a second generation DMU. and you can see the speed, it's still building. Now, to be honest, in model form, that's going far too fast for my liking, and I wouldn't want it there. So there is something I can do. If I stop that now, let it go around to finish. And in the meantime, I'll go back into CVs, programming track, and set back to number five. I can just type in the number there, by the way. But I'm gonna set this to say something like 150. I think would be a good one for this. Wait for the train to twitch. There we go. Back into running. And set that to top speed. And that's pretty much it. That is a much more acceptable speed for the maximum speed of a DMU. And even then, to be honest, I'd still like to do that and sort of just bring it down a little bit. So I've got more to go if I want to, but that is an acceptable mo speed for the model train. Okay, now, like I said, CV2, five and six work together. So what about six then? Well, six should be set to half the value of five. Now I've just set that to 150, which means I need to set six to 75. So I'll go back in here, programming track, set this one to six and 75, set. and the train moves off again. Say for example, you've gone in and 
you've you've played around with your CVs, CVs one to six, and the train is just doing random things. Now, I must say, I can't take responsibility. If you choose to change the CVs, it's up to you. It's your train. You do it if you feel you want to. If you don't want to do this, don't. Hence the disclaimer at the beginning of the video. Now, if I go back in now, I'm going to go back into CV programming and say, for example, I've just mucked this up. The CV you want is eight. Now, a lot of modern chips are now going CV eight and you set it to eight. And that usually does a reset. Now, depending on the brand of decoder you've got in your locomotive or train, will really depend on the CV value you use to reset. So I'm going to go with eight, but I have seen two, I have seen four, six, or even 12. I wouldn't necessarily go around um, trying them all, but try and find out what the reset value is of your chip. And I would do that before you start anything, just in case it does go pear-shaped. Now, I'm going to reset this back to eight and hit set. Now, if I go back in now and start trying to run my train, watch. Oh, nothing's happened. I've mucked it up. No, I haven't. I've reset it, which basically means everything has been wiped back to factory settings. When you buy a new train, that's come DCC fitted, or you buy your own decoder that you put into a train, the CV address is three. And if you look at my train here, that's set to 10. So it won't work. I've got to change the values. So if I, if I just change the address, so I'm gonna go into program address and change that back to 10. Now do bear in mind everything we've done has been reset. So it won't have that beautiful acceleration that we've just put in because it's, it's been reset. Now, I'm gonna get it going and I want to show you something else. So look, there we go. You can see. But the eagle eyed amongst you might have noticed something. Look at the lights, red there and red here. How many times has that happened to you? You've reset the chip and then you've got the same coloured lights at both ends of the train. Now, this end is going, this is the dummy car and this is the motor car. Now, if you take off the dummy car and then we're going to change the value of CV29. Now, this is CV29 is, it's a brilliant CV, but what I would say to you is don't go and meddle. If you do, you can muck up the whole, cut the whole decoder and the whole decoder will then have to be completely reset. There is a possibility if you put in the wrong value or you're not listening to what I'm saying, <laughs> forgive me, <laughs> remember I am a teacher, <laughs> um, you're, you might find your train won't respond at all. So just listen carefully. I say that with the greatest of respect. Please understand where I'm coming from. I teach children. <laughs> now, I am going to put in CV29. Oops, if I can get it, if I can press the buttons properly. Oh. I'll, I'll just add one there. So CV29. Now I'm going to read that value. Now this value has come up with 14. Now that's an even number. So to change the orientation or the direction of the train, I'm going to add one. Now, just in case you've forgotten how to do year one maths, 14 add one is 15. I know, I am very clever at maths. <laughs> so I've now changed it to 15, set CV. There you go, it clicked. If it's an odd number that comes up, take one off. 
So if it's an even number with, with CV29, add one to change the direction. If it's an odd number, take it off. Please, please, please do not meddle with CV29 other than this, unless you know what you're doing, because it can muck up decoder. Now, that has got white lights at the end now. Excuse me. There you go, white lights. All right. Put this one back on now. You'll see that's got red lights back at the other end. So if I now go back into running and switch the direction, you'll see the white lights have come on at this end. I switch the direction back and it goes the other way. So if I run that now, bearing in mind I haven't reset the values, so it's still... I've done that on the controller with the, the speed. You can see there's white lights at the far end. And just to recap this very, very quickly, CV1 is the address. CV2 is the start voltage. Again, remember the lower the number, the slower the train will go or start off. CV3 is acceleration. The higher the number, the slower it will go. So if you set it to one, it will shoot up like a bullet out of a gun. Set it to 70, it will creep off and take up to, some people say, 70 seconds to get up to full speed. CV4 is deceleration. And the higher the number, the slower the train will take to stop. And it's more uncontrollable. So I normally set mine to 15, which then allows me to stop a train in the station if I want it to where I want to stop it. CV5 is top voltage or maximum speed up to 255. So fast modern trains set to 255, steamers and DMUs, heavy trade trains, perhaps set them to a lower value, perhaps 150, maybe even a bit lower. Try it out, experiment with that, that's not a problem. CV6 needs to be set to half the value of CV5. And then if you find you've just done your reset and you're running a DMU or more than a, bit, a train with more than, a set of, more than one set of lights at both ends and both lights have changed to the same colour, take off the dummy car and put, leave the power car on the track and then change CV29 or read CV29. If it's an even number, add one. If it's an odd number, take one off. I'm hoping that makes sense. Right, I'm just... Okay, now you can see I've got the Hornby Select. Now you might say to me, John, you can't do anything with this. And I agree to some, some of that. It's, it is very limited. But for a starter DCC controller, it's fine. It is a bit cumbersome, but it does the job. But you might say to me, you can only change the address on a, D on a Hornby Select. You can't do anything else. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. You can change the acceleration and the deceleration. Now watch. I'm going to press this. Well, in fact, let me show you. So you can see I've just set the train off. I just want to show you this so you know I'm not fudging this. Train's coming back. Okay, now do remember, I've, I have just reset the acceleration, but we did set it just a few seconds ago. So if you hold down this button and that button, you get AC come up. Now, if I then type in 30, which is what I'm after, press select. Right, I'll change the direction so the train's coming this way, watch. If I put that down there, the mark's right round here now, the white mark. Look, the train moves off a lot more slowly. Okay, I'll bring it back. Moving the control round.
right, and stop it just past the blue wires. Okay, now hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Now that's acceleration, so that's that button and the function button together. But if you press this button, the other arrow, and function again, you get DE come up, and that's deceleration. Now I like my trains to stop at 15, like I've said. So select, red lights flashing, and it's done. Take it up. In fact, let's put it to full speed. So I've taken the, the controller right around here. You can see it's slowing down or speeding up very gently. Now I'm going to bring it to zero. So you can see the train is coming to a stop all by itself. I didn't do that except put that to there. All right, so these are not totally useless. You can change the basic CVs with this. You can't unfortunately change five or six. You can't reset the chip on this and you can't certainly change CV29. You can only change one, three and four. All right, but hoping that's helpful. To find out more about basics, um, do follow along. I'm putting a, a video up on the screen right now, which is going to show you all the basics about track and the things you need to know about track. And the bottom video is going about how to change a point once it's already installed. All right. Take care, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.